<clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, Silent Mike again. You may know for I guess almost two years, my whole life, but for the last two years or so, I've been dealing with some my neck, my back, my, you know, and my crack issues. Uh, two years ago last summer, uh, two, uh, one and a half years ago in the summer, I sprained my back in a contest prep. Um, don't know what was wrong with it, but it was the worst it's ever been. So I took four to eight weeks off, just did belt squat, loaded carries, and upper body. Uh, and then I uh, felt good enough and I competed in that deadlift only competition where I did pull 705. Uh, felt pretty decent going into that last winter, again a year ago now. Um, training volume was decent in terms of deadlifts and squats. Uh, as I was losing body weight, I dropped about 20 pounds over that time period, and uh, everything went okay. Uh, coming back to this spring now, 2017, uh, sprained the back a little bit again. Um, a mixture of uh, inconsistent um, travel, uh, which messes up my sleep and my hydration and my food, uh, messes up my routine, although I do consider myself fairly um, smart even when I do travel. I never lift that much above like 80%. If I go heavy, it's like a heavy set of five at 80% or something. Um, Cause everyone's comments gonna be like, you do it for the YouTubes, you do it for the Instagrams. Uh, so retweaked it. Uh, I was also doing a lot of beltless training then, which um, I experimented with about five years ago, beltless blocks and stuff, and it didn't work out with me, but I thought this time one out of convenience so I didn't have to travel with my belt. And then two, uh, I thought I'd give it another go, you know, come around, continue to uh, learn and evolve, and maybe I went too heavy at the time, so I decided to go lighter with beltless training to see um, if it would have some kickoff uh, into my belt training, and obviously it didn't as I felt things tweak up. Uh, I had a lot of body work done, some ART stuff. Uh, you guys saw the video with the muscle doc. He did give me some awesome uh, kind of prehab, rehab exercises. Uh, although he's a chiropractor and you guys had uh, wonderful things to say about the profession, um, I like uh, Jordan a lot as a human and I like him as a professional because he doesn't only just say, oh, let me crack your back and on your way. One, uh, he just totaled 1,900 pounds, which is a big total, uh, I think weighing about 230, 240. Uh, so he's a strong dude, he knows what I do. Um, and then beyond that, he looks at not only the spine, which uh, oh, historically is all chiropractors look at, but he's looking at the musculature, he's looking at how you move, he's looking at different factors. So um, basically, let's say my pain level before I saw Jordan was maybe uh, a six or a seven. So I was able to train, but I was just squatting, you know, around 315. And I think I wasn't even deadlifting for a while. Uh, then when I started to implement some of Jordan's exercises, uh, I'd say my pain uh, decreased to maybe a five, uh, maybe even a four on some days. Uh, and I began to be able to load up the bar, but it never got past that threshold from maybe a four or five uh, to go away or even a three, two, one on the pain scale. So uh, went down to LA, uh, again, sleep off, uh, food off, hydration off, everything off. I kept with my warm ups pretty good uh, that Jordan gave me. Um, uh, I didn't always do the recovery workouts, which are kind of the off day uh, rehab stuff uh, to allow me to train better the following day. But I did do my warm ups just as he said. Uh, squatted 495 for a triple. Um, actually felt pretty good while I did it. I didn't feel a lot of pain, uh, but that evening afterwards, uh, my back had locked up worse than ever. Not to get too graphic, but uh, when I hurt my back about two years ago, I probably feel like it was a seven or eight out of 10. Um, and for those, you know, think, oh, toughen up and lift through. I tried to lift through and I just knew that I was, you know, digging a hole in cement that I was getting nowhere. Uh, and it's not so much that I can't deal with the pain. It's the fact that how frustrated I get that I can't advance, that I can't lift more weight or train the volume I want to get to where I uh, want to go. Although I'm not world record strong, I am fairly advanced in my training that I've been doing it so long. And so the amount of volume I need or frequency I need to progress to get uh, into the 600 squat, into the uh, mid seven pull and into the mid four uh, bench uh, is very high and my body can't keep up with that. I can't train the volume I want and that's very frustrating for me. Uh, so this time around, I felt that it was worse because I couldn't even take a crap. Like flexing to take a crap, uh, I just literally couldn't. My spine felt like it was going to explode. And that's when I hit up Jordan. I was like, hey man, like pain's gotten different and it's gotten worse. Uh, and so we came up with a plan and the plan is right now um, to take a break off squats and deads, which in the past helped me well. Uh, I believe Mr. Untamed Strength Allen is getting a belt squat, which will be a lifesaver because basically what that does is take the load off the upper body and I don't have to hinge and I can still work my quads in a very similar squat pattern. Uh, so that's gonna help me a lot. Hopefully he gets that soon. Uh, I'm gonna smash on that maybe three, four, five days a week. Um, I'm gonna try to bench three or four days a week uh, and then hit all the upper body accessories. So you guys right now, I know that was a long sappy story of being injured and we'll go into some depths on how to train while you're injured or figure things out uh, in a second. But right now we're announcing 
we got a hypertrophy block. Ladies and gentlemen, it's winter time, it's holiday time, we're all eating pecan pie and apple pie with the ice cream and the turkey and the mashed potatoes and everything else delicious, and it's time to make some gains. So uh, I'm still gonna diet a little bit, but we're gonna turn up the hypertrophy, we're gonna be hitting sets of eight, 10, 12, even fives on all the movements, try to get a little bit uh, more muscles uh, and give my lower body a break. So I do have traveling coming up, it's a lot easier to hit kind of a fluff and puff bodybuilding workout in a hotel or on the road than it is for me to really progress in the squat bench or dead. Um, benching obviously is a lot easier too because I don't really need any equipment. Warm ups are a little bit easier for me. My shoulders uh, knock on uh, cement and metal, uh, never really hurt. So I'll be able to do that on the road, plus the holidays, plus the travel will be okay. Now, how do you know if you're injured or if you're hurt? I get these questions every single day in Instagram. Uh, and if you honestly think you're injured, I get DMs and, and, and don't flood me because I, do, I don't want to answer these. Hey, Mike, I have an injured uh, right blah, 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 labrum, left back, left shoulder. Uh, what should I do? Well, you should go to a doctor. If you think you're actually injured, you need to go to a doctor. Going through uh, an Instagram message to get an actual prescription or diagnosis of your injury just isn't very intelligent. Just think about it. Just think about uh, how serious an injury could be. And uh, based off this much information that you're just gonna ask somebody on the internet, uh, one, I'm not a doctor. Yes, I have uh, plenty of experience with different pains and injuries and hurts just through the years of coaching people in the gym and in sport, uh, but I can't diagnose something. One, it's not my job. Two, through limited information in a message. So go seek professional help. Uh, number two is uh, don't give up. Uh, you know, today it was hard for me to get out of bed, literally and metaphorically. I was not excited to come to the gym. I'm not excited to train right now. My goal was to compete in January, February, and that goal is now broken because I can't get to where I wanna get because of injury. It's not fun, it's not exciting. It's not inspirational, it's not motivational to be injured. Uh, and if you guys want all this guru motivational horseshit, you're on the wrong channel. You can go follow those guys everywhere else on Instagram and every other YouTuber there is. But the fact is I'm not always up, I'm not always happy, and I'm not always excited to come and train. I'm not, I'm not Superman, I'm not stoked. I have issues mentally and physically, and being excited uh, to train is one of them, especially when I'm beat up. The difference, I think, that between me and some of these other people, or guru motivational people or otherwise is that at the end of the day when it's all said and done I do get up and I do uh, accomplish what I need to accomplish for that day that workout that business meeting whatever it might be those emails that work that I have to get done I get it done but I'm not always stoked about it so if you want to feed into the bullshit that all these other people have that they're so excited about life and they're champions and they persevered through everything and kicked life's ass when they were down and they just crushed it and you could kill it too and we're all killing it together by all means head that way unsubscribe from here because I'm not your guy. If you want some real shit, you're here. We're all here. My back fucking hurts. I was pissed to get up this morning. I laid, I've been sleeping on the ground for two months. I laid on the ground for half an hour on my phone, pissed, thinking about hitting up Connor saying, bro, we're not going to the gym today. I quit. But instead, I chugged a fucking energy drink, crushed it on my head, counted my millions of dollars, hopped in my Ferrari, and came to the freaking gym. None of that actually happened, besides the fact that I was sat in on the ground. Um, Actually, I hopped into my 1990 BMW, which if you guys haven't checked out the video about buying my dream car, because we're going to go film that right now. But uh, long story short, I guess, is that um, you have to figure out different ways and different routes you can work around your injury. If it's a shoulder injury, you know, you can start to do things like a safety squat bar on the, on the squat, uh, lunges, machines is a great time to start to utilize different machines and hammer strength tools uh, when you are feeling beat up or injured. And that's why I'm excited for the belt squat. I think that's one of the best out there. I'm not endorsed by any belt squat companies, unless you guys are interested, but I do think it's a great tool uh, to, to help my hip hinge because the hip hinge is kind of what's hurting me right now. Again, I don't know, uh, you know, whether it's a disc injury uh, or something do with the disc although I'm sure something's beat up there from all the years of squatting and playing basketball uh, but I do just have some imbalances in this hip uh, glute med QL erector uh, hip flexor TFL all these things are very uh, angry and so what I plan to do is uh, get this work done we got holidays got to spend it with my moms uh, and then Connor and I are going to New York and then when we come back down here we're gonna head over to the muscle doc uh, and check out some ideas that he has for kind of the rehab to balance this thing back out but it'll probably be six to twelve weeks no deadlifts, no squats, besides some uh, variations perhaps, um, and then continue. Uh, the reason I'm eliminating the deadlift uh, and the squat, uh, I don't always think that's 
perfect. I think if you can work around your injury or work through your injury while staying, still maintaining some type of squat or deadlift variation, whether it's blocks or a pause squat really light or something, I do think that's optimal. Uh, I think that's more uh, beneficial in the long run to keep that motor pattern uh, in some uh, instance as long as you can. For me personally, mentally and physically, I just cannot. Uh, I squatted 315 for a bunch of weeks, no, no heavier than 315 for a bunch of weeks. Uh, I felt okay and I pushed it. Mentally and physically, I'm just not capable of keeping those movements in without pushing them uh, and without being frustrated. And what people don't talk about, uh, these coaches and these gurus in the world, is the mental aspect of the sport and compliance in the sport. Yes, there's optimal frequency and volume and all these things but if you can't stick to it you're not having fun or you're mentally not in the game uh, then all those things go out the door and so what I have to do for myself is step away be self-aware and understand that if I'm going to uh, have the longevity of a career and compete multiple times into my 40s shit, I'm almost 30 uh, that we're gonna have to pull back right now take some time to just strengthen my quads figure out uh, the imbalances in my body, not squat or dead because I know I can't control myself when I wanna load up the bar, I wanna get hyped, I wanna have fun, uh, and I can't do that right now. Uh, so I'm gonna add in a little bit extra cardio, probably some sprints on like an assault bike or a spin bike, uh, belt squat, and then I'll see what Jordan has for me. Doc Jordan, uh, see if, it, it, you know, my idea is it's probably some loaded carries, maybe some Bulgarian uh, split squats, some different things that he has in mind, uh, as well as upper body time. So four days a week bench, back, arms, shoulder. Let's get swole together. I appreciate you guys. Hopefully you don't mind my mini rant. Uh, just thoughts that pop into my freaking skull uh, is that we all get frustrated and we all get down. Uh, I'm very frustrated right now. Uh, so I'm going to not think about the gym. I'm going to go drive my car around uh, city of Sacramento. Appreciate you. Give the video a thumbs up. Head down, chin up. We're out of here.